Hello, this is Mike Moyer, author of Trade Show Samurai. Thank you very much for coming to my afternoon webinar here. Um, I'm going to go through sort of a short version of the webinar covering some of the core skills of Trade Show Samurai. And if you're attending this, you've been invited through a number of different uh, avenues. My marketing online have reached out to you, or I met you at a trade show, or you're on one of my other uh, book lists. And however you got here, I'm really happy that you were able to take the time out of your day to uh, spend some time with me learning about trade show exhibiting. You should see a picture of a trade show samurai guy. You should see a picture of the trade show samurai guy there, and uh, we'll get started. Um, there's a number of components to the trade show samurai program, and it's really about how you capture leads at the trade show floor and make the most of those leads by a little bit of pre-planning, uh, the physical attributes of what you and your booth staff do at the booth. Um, the things you do at the show to make sure your brand is uh, apparent and then how you cultivate and harvest the sales later. And the key thing that we get out of the trade show samurai uh, techniques are what I call virtual referrals. A virtual referral is as much like a personal referral as you can get. So a personal referral is, uh, is, is giving a lead to the sales team that um, they is kind of a, a pre-prepared lead. A virtual referral is one that feels very personal. It feels as if they will know you. So what we want to do when you go to trade shows is make connections with people in such a way that when our sales team calls, it feels like a personal referral. It's called a virtual referral. For this webinar, which is a short version of my entire program, and I'll tell you more about the whole program later on, I'm going to concentrate on two things. One is capturing the lead, which are the four core arts of the trade show samurai. And the second thing I'm going to concentrate on is a couple, one trick at least for solidifying your brand at the show. And I'll show you the water bottle trick, which is a, a popular one that I use for uh, my clients. The first thing that I want people to understand is that trade shows, at least the way that I approach them and the trade show samurais approach them, are all about getting sales. This is a sales system. It's a sales lead generation program, and it's the aim is to get sales. Now people go to shows for all kinds of different reasons um, and a lot of times their reasons aren't really clear. Sometimes it is they, they go to the show because they feel like they have to be there in order to uh, make, a, make them, their presence known as a kind of a PR event. Um, I'm going to assume that you want to generate sales and grow your business as a result of going to a trade show otherwise you wouldn't be going to the trade show. So um, we have to be very respectful of our salespeople and uh, uh, one of the things that I, uh, I do as a a trade show consultant is I, I, I rarely actually include the sales team in the booth. I usually use marketing people because I want them to spend their time on sales, either sales at the show, outside the booth, or sales at home, or giving them, most importantly, leads they can prioritize and use. So this is there's a concentration on sales here, making sure that the people get the most out of sales. The next thing I want to talk about is a qualified versus a qualifiable lead. Everybody wants qualified leads. A qualified lead is someone who has the budget, has the need, has the timing, has the authority, all the things that uh, you want out of a good lead. You can't have a qualified lead unless you know the information about that lead. It has to be a qualifiable lead. You have to have the questions answered so that the salesperson can look at that and determine whether or not it's qualified. Not every lead you get at a trade show will be qualified, but unless you capture the right information, you will never know. So what most of the time we do is we give the salesperson a stack of business cards which are not qualifiable leads. They can't tell from looking at a business card if that person's qualified or not. Or we give them a uh, Excel spreadsheet full of our electronic scans. Again, we can't tell from that list if it's qualifiable or not. So we need to give the salespeople something they can use. Trade show samurais typically experience a you know, five or tenfold increase in the lead generation at the shows. Um, so it's no big deal if you hand someone six or eight business cards, I can call them all. If you give someone a hundred business cards or a thousand business cards, there's no way they can prioritize their time and it becomes overwhelming. And so many of those aren't worth anything, um, the salesperson gets frustrated and doesn't call any of them. That's a very common uh, scenario. So what we're going to do is create a, a scenario where uh, you can have qualifiable leads. We can rank order the leads in order of importance. So let's cut right to the chase and caption the lead. Most of the time when we go to trade shows, we set the booth up, get our outfits on, get our hotel room settled, our transportation, get all those things, get our tchotchkes ordered, get all this stuff together, and we do very little planning on what we actually talk about in the booth. Shows I've been involved in, in my early days, 
Um, there'd be a sales meeting at the beginning where we'd talk about some of our major products, but there was no effort put into what we actually do in the booth, how we engage people, how we communicate. So the communication behaviors of what you do in the booth is very important. So capturing the lead is all about what you do in the booth. And there's four core arts of the trade show samurai. The first one is called the art of engagement, which is getting people into your booth. The next is the art of intrigue, which is giving them just enough information about your company to be intrigued by you, but not so much that they know everything about you. At a trade show, it's much more important that you know about the attendee than they know about you. We have an, uh, uh, an instinct to tell people all about our company, how great we are, what kind of products we have, what, how fantastic it is, at the expense of learning about the attendee. But it's much more important that you know about the attendee than they know about you because you have basically the entire year to sell the attendee. You only have a couple days of the show. So your goal is to learn as much as you can about the attendee and be asking the right questions, which brings us to the art of inquiry. The art of inquiry is about asking the right questions at the right time to the people that are attending your, exhibiting your, your exhibit. The last part is the art of disengaging, which is actually getting rid of somebody so you can move on to the next person. Now, on the trade show floor, we want to spend three to five minutes tops with each attendee and so we can move through them quickly. Even if the attendee uh, is, is, the attendance is slow, we still want to move through people fast so we can be free to capture the next person. Um, especially if it's slow, we want to get that person out of the booth so we can move on to the next person uh, and not miss any time. So it's very important how you get people out. And we're going to cover all of these in detail right now. Uh, and the result will be lots and lots and lots of qualifiable leads. A great big list of leads that you can rank order for your sales team and tell them what they need to know in order to be successful. I'm going to use a case study based, loosely based on a client of mine. The company is, this is a made up name, it's called Fresh Light. And I'll talk about uh, what this company does uh, throughout the presentation. But the basic overview is that they make filtration products, air and, fil air and water filtration products for both commercial and household use. And uh, this is an actual uh, case study that, I, that I've, I've used over the years, and it makes a lot of sense to people. So I use that as the case study. The art of engagement. This represents a 10 by 10 inline booth. This dotted line here is what I call coastline. It's the part of your booth carpet that meets the carpet of the aisle. So on either side of the, this booth there will be other 10 by 10 ugly booths. Yours is going to be a nice, clean, simple booth. No tables and chairs. You don't need to sit down. Not a lot of displays. A simple backdrop to make you look good. And the more clean and empty you can make your booth, the more space you'll have to, make, uh, to capture leads. Uh, don't uh, resist the urge to bring a bunch of stuff and tables and chairs to sit down on. You don't need to be sitting during the show. And if you do need to sit, you can always leave the booth and go sit somewhere else. So especially in a small booth, uh, I want it as clean as possible. Uh, the only thing you should have would be uh, a place to keep materials, uh, perhaps a kiosk for data collection. Um, but most of this part, you want to stand up the whole time. Uh, and the way you want to be standing is as follows. This is your foot, one foot in the booth and one foot out of the booth. This is the stance you're standing angled towards the aisle looking for attendees. Now this is going to give you a good 10 feet of space in which to engage that, in, that attendee. If they keep walking by, you can walk backwards and cap capture them. Of course, these feet are a lot bigger than you would on a 10 by 10 booth, but just for demonstration purposes, that's what I got here. You're scanning a 10 to 15 foot area out in front of you. And here are our attendees milling around the show, trying to avoid eye contact. Walk, looking around for something interesting. And you are going to be standing there, and you're going to look at people as they walk by, and you're going to try to make eye contact. Eye contact is critical. Eye contact is everything. When you make eye contact with them, you see someone's eyes, you want to acknowledge them and smile. You don't say anything. It's too far away at this point, but by acknowledging them and smiling, they're going to respond to you, usually by stepping towards you. As they step towards you a couple times, at five feet, when they're five feet away from you, you actually want to speak to them. And what you say is a very, very important next step. And you should plan that, and I'll show you how to plan it right now. Uh, this is called the Battle of Bonsai. The bonsai is a little tree, and we're going to use a little tree branching technique to figure out who it is that we're talking to in a very short period of time. And this is how it works. The first thing you ask them is, do they carry your products? Do they carry fresh light products? In this case, uh, this company was a startup company. They said, why would I ask that question? No one carries our products. We've never sold in the United States before. 
And my response is always, you might as well let them think that you're a bigger company than you are. Uh, you, always could, you should always ask, do you carry our products? This person will say no because they've never heard of those products. Are you a retailer or a distributor? The next question should be one of the two or three major buckets that they have at the show. Every trade show has uh, one or two major buckets of attendees. So in this particular show, this was the houseware show, there were retailers and distributors. Um, at the veterinary show, there are veterinarians and veterinary assistants. At the, at the dental show, they're usually dentists and dental hygienists. So every show has a, one or two major buckets of attendees. There are also others like members of the press, uh, vendors, suppliers, consultants, uh, investors, potential employees, all kinds of groups of attendees could be there, but there's usually one or two major buckets. If they aren't in one of those major buckets, they'll tell you, um, but the best way to do it is start, over, start with the question like, um, are you a retailer or a distributor? And notice as we ask questions, we're stepping backwards into our booth. You want to bring the person from the aisle into your booth so you can have a meaningful conversation with them. So this person, for example, says they're a retailer, and again, we're walking backwards into the booth. What types of products do you specialize in? So now we know they're a retailer, we can branch another branch and what, find out what types of products they're specializing in. That's important to this particular company because if they specialize in uh, cooking utensils, this company may not have a good uh, place. So we'll ask them what kind of special, what they specialize in. Again, ask them questions that are helping you hone down the potential value of this customer. So this guy says he's a hardware store. And again, now look, he's pulled back into the booth getting off the carpet. The last question you want to ask is, have you heard of your company? Have you heard of Freshlight? This is going to set your, yourself up to, be, to go be able to move to the next phase, which is the art of intrigue. So this person is now neatly off, your, off the aisle carpet, onto your carpet. You've asked them a few essential questions to do the, to, during the Battle of Bonsai to make sure you know who this person is. Once you know who they are, you can have a meaningful conversation with them. So this person says they've never heard of us. Now we're open to having the next phase of the conversation, which is called the art of intrigue. The first step of the art of intrigue is to give them what's called a hook. In this case, we use the, ter the, the phrase, we make a light bulb that cleans the air. It didn't matter that this company made water filtration products and air filtration products and carbon products and all kinds of different products. What mattered most is they had this kind of quirky product that was very unique, and this helped us sink the hook into the attendee and really get them interested in who we were. So if there's something interesting about your company, and I hope there is, there should be something interesting about this company, your, your company, um, you should be able to uh, express that very quickly in a way that's intriguing to the, to the end user. So all this stuff is pre-scripted and pre-planned so you know exactly what to say and everyone in your booth is using the same methodology. And they're going to ask a very logical question, really, how does it do that? Which might have been the question that you were thinking when I posed that question a second ago. I told you about that product. It's very logical that someone would want to know how a light bulb can clean the air. This opens the door for the art of intrigue. And you're thinking in your head, Oh, I need to use the hardware retailer trailer. A trailer is a pre-canned uh, explanation of what you do for a particular audience. So you can write a trailer, probably four or five or six different trailers to fit different audiences. And each one of your attendees should read the trailer descriptions as a script so they know what to say. So each audience will have a very specific uh, set of things to say. So in this case, you would say, the light bulb emits anions, which are ions similar to those emitted in nature by waterfalls. The anions cancel out ions that cause odors, smoke, germs, and allergens in the air. It is an LED light and lasts over 20 years under normal conditions. Fresh Light carries a wide variety of filtration products based on this technology. Our retailers have been successful with the product in a number of environments. Hardware stores, I mean, this is a hardware description, hardware stores have historically been our best outlets. They find they fit nicely in both lighting section as well as air filtration. Customers are excited about the product because it has benefits of an air purifier at a much lower cost, about half that of an average filtration system. Plus, it fits into an ordinary light socket saving space. So we've delivered a very intriguing uh, trailer to this person that's going to make them want to learn more. We haven't told them all about our company. We haven't told them about our water filtration and everything else because it doesn't really matter they know that. What, ma what matters is they're interested in telling us more about themselves, not that they, they, we, we're going to talk to more about, not that we're going to talk more about ourselves. So the question the person might have was, hmm, does it really work? Every time they ask a question, you should know in, in advance how to answer that question. You can sit down in advance and think about the questions people might ask and come up with answers for each one of them. So this person, our trade show samurai, is prepared to get that question. They go, ah, the does it work question. We anticipated that people would ask that question, so we planned a pre-canned answer. Again, part of your script planning for the trade show is to have pre-canned answers so that your 
your uh, traits are samurais can keep to the point, stay on track, and move people through very quickly, but give them satisfying answers. So in this case, the person is going to say, the trait show samurai would say, absolutely. It creates an effect similar to what you might expect the experience standing next to a waterfall. The clean air is created by the same reaction. We have a number of videos on our website showing the bulbs clear out of smoke-filled room. It's amazing. I'd love to get some additional information about you. Do you have a minute to answer a few questions about your store? Again, you're always bringing it back, and by having the pre-canned answers, you can bring things back to the, uh, the attendee. So this person says, okay, so he's ready to answer some questions. This brings us to the art of inquiry, asking the right questions in the right order to the right people. The first step in the art of inquiry is to sit down with your team, your sales team, and decide what's the perfect ideal customer. What is your wish list? What would you wish for if you were going to close a sale right away? The easiest low-hanging fruit. You want to define what that means. So in this case, the fresh light folks th thought that they want to talk to owners or buyers of hardware stores that carried filter, allergy, and light products. They were a stocking dealer and had more than 10 stores. So that was the ideal customer for them. If they were a housewares store, they'd be a little more difficult to sell to. If it was uh, 60 or 70 stores, that may, there might be more of a bureaucracy. If there are fewer than 10 stores, the company may not be willing to take risks. If they were a website that didn't stock, they didn't want them. So the ideal customer was this one. Now, it would be nice for them to sell Walmart or Target or Kmart, um, but they knew that was a difficult sale. So we weren't, they're going to still pursue those sales, but this was a sweet spot. So we had to capture this information, if nothing else, about this customer. So we created a lead card. And if you do nothing else for your trade show and you ignore everything I say today, don't please ignore this. The lead card is by far, without a doubt, without exception, the most valuable tool you can have on the trade show floor. It is a critical piece of trade show equipment. It is always the number one thing people overlook. You might have a scanner, you might have a fishbowl, whatever you do, have a paper-based lead card. We can always make an electronic version too, but the paper lead card is going to be your fallback on whatever happens. It's going to force you to think about what goes on. I actually have a lead card here that I can share with you. So if you look under your pop-ins on your sidebar, you should have a uh, link there for the lead card. So here's how the lead card works. This is a lead card template that I just shared with you. Um, the lead card captures information about the individual and then it has these important points that you want to capture during the show um, and built in form of a checkbox. You can check off the pertinent information. This is going to help make your lead qualifiable. So let's say this one is filled out. So here we got Mike Moy from Samurai Ace Hardware. Got his email address. Oh look, he's the owner. We check that off. He's in charge of purchasing and management. He's a chain. They carry air filters, allergy, and lighting products. They have 10 to 20 stores, and they're a stocking distributor. If I pass this off to my sales team, the sales team would be super excited about it because it's exactly what they want to find. Um, I don't have to worry about whether or not uh, this is a good lead or not because I know exactly how good the lead is. So the sales guy gets it. He scrolls down. He sees the notes that I wrote. These guys have a special allergy section in the store, which is right next to the air filtration section. They have 11 stores in California that do a high volume in air filtration. I've also checked off my initials, so if you want to do a contest with your uh, samurais in the booth, you can you can count up how many leads they captured with, by then checking off their initials. I also checked off Hank. Hank means this is a hot lead. Hank, Will, and Carl stand for hot, warm, and cold. I generally don't put hot, warm, and cold on here because if you put that on there and you check off cold, the person looking over your shoulder may be upset that they, they were deemed as cold, so I use Hank, Will, and Carl's little trick to kind of hide my real intention there. Um, but this lead is an excellent lead. The salespeople are going to be really excited about it, and the more of these you can collect, the better. Now, if this wasn't a very good lead, that would be good too, because the salesperson could deprioritize that person, and they could rank order that person and call the, the bad leads when they have the time, but the good leads right away. Um, you can also use an electronic form. iPads are good for this, uh, of course, if you have enough of them, and the Internet's working, and your technology doesn't break, and you have enough iPads for everybody, you can use an iPad form. Again, the key is to create check boxes and check marks so you can just check off things very quickly as you go through it. Uh, and you'll create a good lead card. So I call it the Samurai Uploading Market Outpost, Sumo. The last thing is the art of disengagement, getting rid of people at this show. And I call it the Dow of Tchotchke.
most people bring a certain amount of the stuff to trade shows and uh, this is how you get rid of somebody you give them some piece of stuff now a lot of people use this to bring somebody into their booth they attempt to lure someone in with a uh, a mug or a t-shirt or a pen or something to, uh, to a giveaway item to get them into their booth this is the wrong way to use this if all the person's coming into your booth for is to get a piece of a piece of swag then it's probably not going to be a very good prospect so if they're coming to engage you in a meaningful way you can use it to get rid of somebody later on the best uh, there's a couple of good ones and I'll talk about one uh, them later but uh, you know a business card could be one of the best things to give away you don't have to spend a lot of money on this when you think about trade shows and how much the trade show costs I always think of rather than return on investment I think of cost per lead it's much easier measure for the trade show staff to come up with the cost per lead is the entire cost of the show including the cost of the swag divided by the number of attendees so if you buy a hundred but not the number of attendees the number of leads you collect capture so if you give away 50 mugs but you want to capture two leads all 50 mugs are going to be allocated to those two leads all the costs the travel costs the transportation costs the meal costs the hotels the booth costs the displays the brochures the chachis everything you buy divided by the number of leads you capture is your per lead cost and if that number is pretty high it's going to be pretty embarrassing and pretty uh, jagged little pill for your manager to swallow if you can get that down to be a hundred dollars or lower you have a pretty decent lead cost that just about any business to business marketer can be proud of. So keep that in mind when you buy things for the show. The more less expensive, the better. Um, so when you're ready to disengage with someone, you grab one of your tchotchkes and you start closing your body off. You turn your body physically away from the person that you are talking to. As you can see, this person is turning physically away. And you start walking towards the edge of the aisle and say something like, it was nice to meet you, please take our catalog or card or squeeze ball or anything else, and Yin Yangle is a game that's, there's more about this on my site, which is a trade show game that uh, is very inexpensive and fun for uh, to attendees to play. And again, you walk, and as you start walking, they'll start walking. I'll make sure someone from our sales department follows up next week. And then keep walking. If you want to talk to our sales department sooner, here's the card for our VP of sales. It's always good to pass out your sales department's VP, uh, Sales department's cards, not your own cards. After all, you want them to call you, you want them to call your sales department. So you take another step. Thanks for stopping by. And by that time, they are on the carpet of the aisle and they're on their way. And there they were walking away. And now you are in position to capture your next lead. This is a very quick process. It happens three to four minutes. And it's designed to capture the right kind of information for your sales team. Trade show samurais always focus on capturing leads. If the person wants to talk in more depth about your product or your service or look at a demo, you can always pass them off to somebody else in your booth that is prepared to do that. I call them a trade show ninja. A trade show ninja is someone who can handle more in-depth questions. A trade show samurai should always be focusing on capturing leads. So I've covered the art of engagement, intrigue, inquiry, and disengage inquiry and disengagement, and you've captured the leads. The next thing I want to talk about is another step in the process, which is called solidify your brand. The interaction that you'll have with your attendee is a very satisfying interaction for both you and the attendee. They feel comfortable that they are in interested in your company, then you've captured some information, and they're confident you're going to follow up with them. Um, and they've sent on their merry way. You're respecting their time as well as your own. However, you're going to want to remind them that you exist and remind them that you're someone who is important. Um, so getting some visibility at the trade show is important. Um, and I call these things sponsorships and flags. I'm going to show you one technique that I've used with a lot of success at shows. Um, the key to making a flag visible is to make it visible, frequent, and positive. So you want lots of interaction, you lots of visibility on the show floor. You want them to see it a lot of times, and you want them to be a positive interaction. They want to think, oh, that's nice. I see it. It's a good react. It's a good interaction. So one trick you can use besides expensive sponsorships is what I call the water bottle trick. And this is a fantastic technique that's very inexpensive that you can do at your next show and be a hero among other ex exhibitors. And here's how it works. You go to Costco or you go to anywhere you buy water bottles, and you remove the labels from the water bottles. Then you make your own label and you make it into a sticker and stick it on the water bottle. So now you have a customized water bottle. It was very inexpensive. 
you take a bunch of those early on before the show opens and you pass them out not to attendees but to other exhibitors. So you pass them out to your neighbors, the other big, your competitors if you want, anybody you want. Introduce yourself, say, hey, just wanted you to have a great show. I thought I'd bring by some bottles of water for you to enjoy during the show. What's interesting about this trick is uh, people will keep the bottles of water out on their booth tables and desks and things during the show. So here's an example of a show that you have, to have not been hit by water bottles. Here's what it looks like when they have your water bottles. And then they will take your water bottles and they will just keep them during the show and you will have your logo all over the place. And this works incredibly well. It's very inexpensive to get your logo all over the place. So as attendees leave your show, they say, oh yeah, I was just over at Fresh Light Booth. I know them. They must be really big because they're all over the show and everyone's drinking their water. Uh, it's a simple trick. It works great and it's a way to get uh, visibility on the show floor without spending a lot of money. So those are the two things I want to catch, cover in this uh, short seminar. This is a half hour seminar I want to show them today. Um, you've learned about capturing the lead and solidifying your brand. There are other components to the trade show samurai process. One's called plant the seed. One's called cultivating your prospects and harvesting the sales. Planting the seed is about how do you get recognition on the show floor on the day of the show using pre-show marketing techniques. I have some more techniques about solidifying your brand and a few other things that are available on my website. I also have written a book about uh, trade shows called Trade Show Samurai that has a lot of the information that I cover in this webinar and others. And you're welcome to uh, to do take a look at that as well. But at the end of the day, once you do those things, you'll get this virtual referral. So the call that your sales guy will have will be something like this: Hi, Mr. Prospect. I'm Joe Sales. Mike Moyer gave me your name. He said he talked to you about Fresh Light in Boston, and you mentioned you were looking for some innovative products for your stores. Mike and I have talked a little about your needs. We think you might be find our service interesting. So what you've done is you've given your sales team a great lead they can follow up on in a meaningful way and have success with, with, the, with the program uh, and have a, have a successful interaction. So it's not like a cold call. It's a very warm uh, virtual referral is what I call it. I have a number of other resources uh, available on my website. Uh, I offer consulting and training. I actually work with people on their trade shows, doing making the materials, training their staff, and uh, actually being a member of their booth staff on attendees at the show day. I've actually brought I can staff a booth for you too and help you capture leads. Um, I also have tradeshowsamurai.com virtual dojo, which is a membership site. I talk more in detail about a postcard trick, which is a way for planting the seed. The Yin Yangle trick, which is a trade show game, there's more information about how the Yin Yangle get, does, works. There's online training like this, there's a full complete set of videos there. There's templates for the lead card, samples of scripts, and all kinds of online help to help make sure that your show is the best show you ever had. And uh, attendees of this particular um, uh, webinar get a uh, free uh, $99 lifetime pass. I'll put that offer up there. If you are interested in that, you can send me an email and I'll make sure you get a link to that. Um, uh, but I'm Mike Moyer, and this has been Trade Show Samurai. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer some. Uh, but uh, we're coming up on 1230, and I promised a half an hour webinar, so that's what I'm going to stick to. Uh, that's my phone number and my website address, and uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you very much for attending.